Good morning, church. I was actually just having a conversation with Mike McGee this morning and Kathy McGee about the enemy, about that horrible enemy that's always after us. What does it say? He's always lurking and seeking to pursue us. And, 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 it's, and we were kind of talking about that and the power that he can potentially have. And watching this video this morning, all of these choices, it could be a year of fear and anxiety. It could be a year of hope and peace. And a lot of times it's so easy to give in to that enemy, to give in to him and let him win. And I don't know, I, if you know me very well, you know I, I don't like losing. I'm a super competitive person and I like to win. And so it makes me happy to know if I've got God on my side, who can stand against me, right? Um, anyway, he was talking about, I was telling him how much we appreciate his praises um, during the service, especially after a, praise, a new praise song. We're like, ooh, how'd it go, how'd it go? And we hear Mike, amen, Helen. I'm like, woo, okay, we're good, we're good. But if he says, you know, he, sometimes the enemy creeps in and, it, and he thinks, oh, what would people think? What do people think about me always talking or always testifying and all that stuff? And, oh, what would we miss out on? How much would we miss out on if we listen, let the enemy win? So this morning, we're making a choice. We're not going to let the enemy win. And we're going. It, it is a powerful thing to make him shudder. So with a thousand hallelujahs this morning, sing with me. Sing out. And let's, let's make the, the enemy shudder and shake this morning and with praise to our king. Please join us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Stand and sing with us. A thousand hallelujahs. When rocks cry out to worship, who else taught the stars to shine? Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing.
you. You may be seated. Happy New Year. This is the last time I'll say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. It's good to see all your smiling, happy little faces out there. And I hope you're having a good and wonderful day, and I hope you have come here this morning for the right reason. We have come here today to praise, worship, and glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why we're here. That's the whole reason we're here, and he deserves it. He deserves every bit of it. In the form of announcements, I only have one, I only have one announcement this morning. We have a middle school high school, Sunday school teacher. Yay! All right. So, and they're going to change, they're going to offer their class time is going to be upstairs during church time. After the children's sermon that I do down front, when the kids go up for children's time, that's when the middle schoolers and high schoolers will also go up for their class at the same time. So it'll be during the church children's church time is when that class will be happening and so we're excited about that now today kids and middle schoolers don't leave until after april sings because april's going to sing a special for us and we want to hear that before you go up okay are there any other announcements yes okay go ahead <laughs> um i met with the choir last week um, after church and we kind of, I was just kind of getting a feel for it to see what you guys thought and things like that about. We're going to try, we're going to attempt a choir song a month, okay? Um, so we will start practices next Sunday after church. So please join us. Um, this is a perfect opportunity if you don't think, oh, I can't commit to a whole cantata. You could sing one, one, one month, right? One song a month. So um, join us. If, if you're interested, we'd love to have you. Uh, we practice, we'll practice for about 45 minutes, right? <laughs> More like an hour. Uh, 45 minutes after church next Sunday to try and sing a, a song, hopefully the last Sunday in January. If you're, yeah, if you're not interested, show up, you know. If we're doing one month, Just, you can do this month. And then you yeah, can. you could try it this month. They're great, great ideas, guys. You don't want to come, come anyway, okay? Either way, you don't get to go home, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, we have a good time, so if, it, we'd love to have you. So try it out if you'd like. Amen. Yes, Nancy. Okay. Yep. Yes, all boards and committees need to be meeting here this month, the next month, and getting your calendars ready for the new year because we are in a new year. So let's get our calendars set, okay? Anything else? Lori? They look great, Carrie, especially my picture, but I always look good in pictures, so you did great. <laughs> Even with red eyes. I was crying when that picture was taken. Savannah just came to me and gave her heart to Jesus, and you know me, Mr. Waterbucks up here. My eyes were all wet when I went and had that picture taken. <laughs> Is there any other announcements? All right, do we have any? Do we have, oh, I'm sorry. Amen. If you don't come out on Wednesday night, if you're not coming out on Wednesday night, you're missing a blessing. We have a good time on Wednesday night studying the word together. So come out and join us Wednesday night. We'd love to have you. There's, there's a lot going on here on Wednesday evenings. All right. Do we have any birthdays this week? Anybody with a birthday? 
No birthdays. Any anniversaries? No anniversaries. All right. Been a dead week. All right, let's see, look at our memory verse for today is Psalm 91, verse 2. And I want to say a special thank you to Shirley, who sends me these wonderful memory verses week after week. We appreciate them. Thank you. Let's read together. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Psalm 91, verse 2. Let's pray. Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful Lord's Day, for this opportunity to be in your house this morning with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, as I said a moment ago, I pray that we've all come here with the right attitude and the right mindset. We have come here today not to receive the blessing, which we will, but to be the blessing also. We've come here today to praise you, to worship you, and to be a part of this service where we can all draw closer to your Holy Spirit. And we know, Lord, if we come here with the right attitude and mindset this morning, then we will be blessed. We will have a good church service. And we will fill the presence of your Holy Spirit in this house. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. Now go with us. Sing through us. Praise through us. And preach through me the word this morning that we all may draw closer to you and be more like you. We thank you and we praise you, for it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together to God be the glory.
Good morning. Well, I'm awake now. How about you? Good morning. How are you today? Doing good? Happy New Year to you. All right. Thank you very much. This morning, I would like to teach you a very, very important lesson on patience. Would you like to learn how to be more patient? Would any of you like to learn? Do you all need, oh look, they're out there waving saying, kids, you need to listen. Are you all not patient? You're not? Well, apparently your parents and grandparents are agreeing with you. You're not patient. Okay, here it is. I am now going to teach you how to be patient. Just one moment, please. Are you ready? Yeah. One more moment, please. Hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready to learn about patience? I'm ready. Get ready, get set, begin. Are you all learning it yet? You got it? Have you got it yet? So what I teach you? What did we just learn? How did you feel when I just sat here and stayed stoic, quiet? Relaxed? Relaxed? Well, that's good. I'm glad I could put you to sleep. Wait till I preach a sermon, you'll could see what I can do. <laughs> to be patient, now I'll get you to the lesson. I just taught you patience. You sitting there saying, well, hopefully here in a minute he'll start talking. Hopefully here in a minute he'll start telling us how to learn this great patience. Well, I just did. I just taught you how to learn patience. And how did I teach it to you? What did I just teach you? Did I teach you anything just now? What was it? What? How long you have to wait. 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 How many of you like to wait? How many of you like to wait? Nobody. I don't see any hands going, yeah, I love it. I love it. When you go to the doctor's office, a lot of times what do you have to do when you're sitting in that room with the magazines and books? What do you do? I read them. You read them? Well, good for you. You wait. Then you go into the doctor's office, and then you sit there, and you stare at the fishes. You got fishes at your doctor's office? Well, good for you. At least you got something to look at. So then you go in, and you finally go into the exam room, and you're waiting on the doctor to come in, and then what do you do? Wait. Or you go to school and you're ready for class to start and the teacher's not ready yet. What do you do? Wait. Or you get in your car and you're driving down the road and you get to a stoplight or a stop sign and think of how much time in the automobile do we spend waiting. Do you know why the doctors call medical people that are sick? Patients. When you go into the hospital, you learn real quick why you're called not a client, not a customer. You are called patients. And that's why it takes the doctor so long, right? Patients. Hurry up and wait. Well, you know, let me ask you this. Is waiting a good thing or a bad thing? Because let's face it, we do a lot of waiting, don't we? You think it's a nice thing? Why is it nice? Do you like waiting? Well, you're waiting for someone to get out of the bathroom. You're waiting on someone to get out of the bathroom. That's not nice, is it? That's, 
That's something you never like to wait around about very long, <laughs> wake somebody out of the bathroom. Yeah, it's not easy to wait, is it? It's not easy to just sit and wait to be next in line or wait and have something happen or wait for someone to speak. But waiting is where we learn to be patient. That's what patience is. It is being able and capable to wait. And the younger you are, the harder it is to do. And I hate to tell you, even the older you get, it's still not easy. But either age you are, waiting is not easy. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Simeon. He was an old man. And the Bible says that he was about to the point of time to die. He waited his whole life to see the Messiah. He wanted to see God's Messiah. That's what he'd been waiting for his whole life. And guess what? Right after Christmas, a few weeks after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph take the baby Jesus after Christmas. They take them and they go into the temple. And there's that old man, Simeon. He's waited his whole life till now he's 80 years old and he's about to die. And the Holy Spirit said to him, there he is, there's the Messiah. And it says that this old man walked over and grabbed that baby and got to hold him and he rejoiced because finally his weight had paid off and now he got to hold the baby Jesus in his own arms. He waited his whole life. You know, sometimes people do have to wait their whole life before God answers something they need or does something. But you know what that waiting time does? That waiting time is where we learn patience. Now here's an option we have in the waiting room of life. We can either hate the wait or learn to enjoy the wait. We can hate the wait or we can enjoy the wait. And in that waiting time, you know, what could we be doing in that waiting time instead of just sitting there staring at the fish or looking at the ceiling or looking at our phone? What could we do in those waiting times? You could read the Bible. You could pray. You could think about God, right? The Bible says, as Mike said, be still and know that I am God. And listen, the waiting times of life, you can either dread them or you can turn them into a blessing. So think of those waiting times when you're just sitting there waiting and say, you know what, this isn't a bad time. This is a time where I can talk to God. This is a time I can say my prayers. This is a time I can read my Bible. Whatever it may be, we all have plenty of waiting time, don't we? So let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that when waiting comes, waiting is guaranteed to come. We spend a lot of our lives waiting waiting for the next thing to happen, waiting for the next thing to do. And it is in the waiting times, Lord, that we should not dread them, but we should look at them as a blessing and be reminded that when we wait, that is where patience is learned. We thank you, Lord, so much for helping us to learn patience, and may we, may we take those waiting periods of life and grow in those times. We ask in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys stay in here until after the singer sings, and then you can go upstairs, okay? Thank you for waiting. Our prayer concerns this morning, we want to remember Jacob Carey in prayer. He only has a, doctors have told him a few days to live. So please remember him. Remember Robert Vanderbilt and Roger Thornton and my uncle Rick Moore. Please remember him in prayer. Um, remember uh, Sandy's mom, Shirley Ferguson. and Remember Daryl Donaldson. And then we have several others on our prayer list this morning. Praying for Jill. She got a pretty good report from the doctor there this week. She went about her back. And luckily, the damage wasn't too severe. So keep praying for Jill Beach and her back issues. Do we have any other spoken concerns you'd like to add to our prayer list this morning? Anybody over on this side? Larry Marion? Okay. Anyone else over here? All right.
All right. Thank you, Mike. I'm glad you're here today, Kathy. Anybody else over here? Anybody over here, Patty? Anyone else over here? Pray for Barbara, too. Wednesday. Anyone else? You're in trouble, Nancy. Keep pointing. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Let's pray, church. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful Lord's Day, for this opportunity, dear Lord, to be in your house and worship you and praise you and just love you and adore you. Lord, as we lift up these names to you this morning, you know each one of them. You know what they're going through. You know the sickness they're facing. And Lord, we have a lot of other names on our prayer list we have not mentioned this morning, but you know all the needs. You know all the sickness. You know all the concerns and worries and tribulations that these people are going through. And we know, believe, Lord, that you are the great physician, and you can heal, and you can do all things. You can do great miracles. And we pray for your healing and loving hand to be upon these people. But Lord, we also know that sometimes when we do pray and we ask for healing, the healing does not always come the way we want it to. Sometimes we have to wait and be patient like we talked about a moment ago. And sometimes the waiting rooms of life can be kind of difficult places to be. And then sometimes, Lord, when we pray for healing, we pray for miracles, the healing does not come physically like we expect. Sometimes the healing may come in a spiritual form, in a spiritual way. And Lord, we thank you for that healing also. And no matter what, Lord, we know that when we pray and we ask these things, we always need to be surrendered to your will, your purpose, and your plan, knowing that your will and plan is always greater than ours. Go with us now, Lord. Continue to bless our service. Watch over us, we ask, in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen. Before I sing this morning, um, when I was trying to decide what song to sing, I was talking to Nathan, and he suggested this song, and it's by Lauren Daigle. It's called You Say. And when he said that, I'd heard the song before, but I don't think I'd ever really listened to the words. And when he played it for me, and I listened to the words, and I said, oh, yeah, that's, that's the song God wants you all to hear today. It is filled with so many truths. And as I've meditated on this song this week and I thought of all the truths in this song, the one line, or it's actually two lines that stood out says, in you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. And we live in a world today where we are all, from our babies all the way up to our oldest people, we are all just being attacked from all sides, the world telling us we're not enough. You know, you're never going to measure up. And if you're not happy, all you have to do is change who you are, change your name, change something else. And when we look at the Bible, 
And this, ver this is the verses that, that popped out to me. Isaiah 43, it says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers or difficulties, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Others were given in exchange for you. Jesus Christ died for you. God created us, and we belong to him. No matter what Satan tells us, no matter what other people say, we were created by him. And Jesus died for us.
Children and middle schoolers, you can now go up to your church service. Thank you, April. Beautiful song. All right. Bless you, Mike. Bless you. Amen. If you have a Bible with you there this morning, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 21 through 35. The title of our lesson today is When It's Time to Wait. The kids heard the mini version, now you hear the little longer version. Luke chapter 2, usually when we turn to Luke chapter 2, we always say it's the Christmas message. Well, there's more in that chapter than just the Christmas message. There is this other event that takes place that's a very important moment here. It says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Well, ain't nothing like having the Holy Ghost upon you, amen? And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising among of many of Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the holy word, and I ask now that you speak through me and give us the words we need to hear. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. It has been reported that the average American in a lifetime will spend five years waiting in line. Two years returning telephone calls. Eight months opening junk mail. Amen. And six months staring at traffic lights. In spite of all our modern technology, the first words we often see on our computer screen is what? Please wait. I know at my office when I click on my computer many times there's a little wheel that sits there and spins and spins and spins until the next screen loads up. I call that the wheel of death. We just sit there and watch that wheel go. What's funny is the system we use has a picture of a cheetah on it. I think they need a picture of a sloth sometimes instead of a cheetah. Anyone who makes a telephone call these days, how many of you have ever called a company or corporation and spoken to an actual human being lately? Harder and harder to do, isn't it? Please press 1, please press 2, please press 3. You've got to go through all these robots before you can talk to a human being. That's the waiting room of life. We all have to go through it. Some of you may be here today in the waiting room of life or the waiting, holding state of mind. You're waiting on test results or a word from a job interview for your kids to come home or maybe to get out. 
To wait or not to wait? That is the question. The question is, how will we wait? What purpose and meaning will we find in these waiting times? Because we all know there's a lot of waiting to do when you go through this journey that we call life. And we can either take those waiting room times of life and be discouraged by them, or we can take the waiting times of life and be blessed by them. Well, that's our choice. That's our options this morning. Now there's this character in the Bible, Simeon. Everything there is to know about him is recorded right here in the scripture we read this morning. He was a righteous and devout priest who spent his life waiting for the consolation of Israel. He lived and survived by the constant hope that he would not die until he himself could see the Messiah. Simeon was an expert at waiting. But I'll tell you what, what a greater thing could you be waiting for than waiting on the Lord. Of all the things I want to be waiting on in the years to come in my life, I want to be waiting on the Lord. That's what we should be striving for. So we see, first of all, that Simeon waited with a purpose. His waiting was with a purpose. The ultimate dream of his life was that someday before he died, he would meet the Messiah face to face. Stephen Covey, in his immensely popular book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, says the second habit we ought to embrace is to always begin with the end in mind. Many of us, that in business or in personal lives, we should always begin with the end of mind. Always begin with the end of mind. Covey went on to say that everything is created twice. The first creation is always the creation that we have in our mind. You builders go out and build a building, right? You construction workers. And before you build it, you dream about it. You plan about it. Next, you put it on paper. And then you take a hammer and a nail and you start the construction. The building first was created where, construction workers? In your mind. The vision. You had to think about that building before you went out there and started throwing the hammer and the wood and the nails, right? You had to plan that building. You had to calculate that building. You had to buy the concrete and buy the lumber. Figure out how much you needed to get that job done. You had to have a vision and a plan before you built it. Or a woman dreams of opening a business. Before she opens the door, she defines what she hopes to accomplish, whom she hopes to serve, what niche market she may find. And so before she can open that little store, what she do? She's got to plan it out. How many clothes am I going to need? What type of items am I going to need? What type of space am I going to need? That's planning things out. And that's what waiting with a purpose is. Listen, church, we should not just use the waiting times of life to do nothing. But we should use the waiting times of life to plan purpose in our life. Because I believe the Bible teaches that we are here with a purpose. We are here for a purpose. And we sometimes need to sit down and think about our purpose. Think about our plan. Think about, and what greater purpose can there be than the purpose we know that God has for us. That should be our ultimate purpose. That should be our ultimate plan. Because let's face it, all the other purposes, all the other plans, they're all going to fade away. The only ultimate purpose that is never going to fade away is your relationship with God and what you're doing for Him. The personal mission statement of Bill Gates was, he dreamed of a day when there would be a desk in every home in the world. Guess what? I think it's about happened, hasn't it? may not be sitting on your desk, but you're walking around with it probably in your pocket. The vision has come forth. For Simeon, his purpose, his vision was seeing the Messiah before I die. And church, let me tell you something. Before you die, whenever your plan or your time, I believe our date of death is destined. I believe the good Lord above knows exactly the day I'm going to die, when I'm going to die, how I'm going to die. It is all planned out, so there's no need to worry about it because I trust in God this morning. He's got good plans. Nothing happens by accident. Everything I believe, because I don't believe in accidents, I believe in the sovereign, all-powerful, omnipotent, all-knowing, almighty God. 
And there ain't, there, sorry, mom, mom gets after me. Quit saying that word, ain't. There are not, mothers have to correct their children, there are not no accidents when you're a believer and child of God. It's all working out according to his will, his purpose, and his plan. I mean, it may not always align with ours, but that's what we're working on. You see, when your purpose is great, you will be willing to wait. If you have not figured out on why you are here, if you have no reason to get up out of bed in the morning, if you have no reason, listen, the greatest problem I think a lot of people have today is they get up every day with no purpose. They get up out of bed with nothing to get out of bed for. And listen, if you're in that state, in that pattern of life, you're not in a good place. You want to get up every morning with a purpose. You need to put your feet on the floor and say, Lord, what is my purpose? And the best purpose that we can possibly have is not just to go out and get a paycheck. It's not just to go out and complete a job. The best purpose we could possibly have is loving and worshiping God and leading other people to Jesus Christ. The only thing that is forever is what we do with the Lord and how we lead other people to the Lord. Simeon waited with a purpose. Michelangelo, the painter, so the stories go, once seen by friends pushing a heavy rock through the town square. Some of his friends inquired, Michelangelo, why are you laboring so over that rock? Michelangelo, the famous painter, replied, there is an angel in this rock waiting to come out. You see, he had a reason to live. His purpose was to glorify God. Simeon waited with a purpose. He also waited with patience. And how do we learn patience? Well, I taught the kids a lesson in patience this morning. I think I taught us all here. Patience is what? Learning to have, if you want patience, then I, I'm warning you, if you're praying for more patience in your life, God's going to send you a big wait. He's going to let you wait and wait, and wait. And that's how you learn patience, is by waiting. And it's sure not an easy thing to do. I read a touching story about a man by the name of Howard. And Howard was battling cancer. And Howard wrote in this devotional story that I read, he wrote, one of the greatest lessons of patience, a cancer patient said about his cancer treatment, I discovered why people of the medical profession call consumers patients, as you heard me say earlier. All you do is wait and wait and wait when you're waiting on medical professionals. I remember waiting for hours, he said, to see my oncologist one day. Finally getting in to see her, I sat down and said, by some spiritual design, has God appointed you to try to teach me patience? How many of you have said that to your doctors lately? She said, what do you mean? I said, I have been waiting for two hours to see you. People come to see me, wait ten minutes. And if I'm not there, they write me a nasty note, leave it under my door, and go on their way. She says, well, Howard, maybe people need to see me a lot worse than they need to see you. Ouch. Howard said, I discovered something in that period that changed my life. I discovered either you can take those waiting moments and complain about them, or you can transform them into something spiritual. I started doing something in waiting rooms that I had never done before. I started praying for people when their names were called on the speaker. I called them by name in prayer. I would observe their relatives and see their loved ones sitting there with their agonizing worry upon their faces, and I would offer to go over and pray with them too. What do you do with your waiting time? Have you learned a great purpose and usefulness for your patients? Howard wrote. That's something we all need to think about as we wait. If you're sitting here right now waiting for the end of this sermon... Let's think about that. If you're just waiting for a sermon to come to an end, you shouldn't be sitting and saying, 
Well, he'll wrap her up soon because he likes to eat and we know he'll get out of here at noon. Well, I might go to one today. I'm not that hungry. <laughs> Since I'm preaching on patience, I could just make this sermon go real slow. And a real slow message and you'll squirm in your seat and you'll get all uncomfortable and so forth and you have to wait just a little bit longer till I finish the message. But you're not getting the message if that's what you're doing. If you're really getting the message, you're sitting there saying, Preacher, take as long as you need because this is where I need to be. This is what I need to hear. And in this extra time you take, Preacher, this is more time I get to be thinking about God. More time I get to be praying. More time. And if the sermon is really boring to you, look around the room right now and pray for the people you see in those other seats. Pray for Kathy. Pray for Mike. Pray for Albert. Pray and look around you right now and think about what's that person going through and what's that person going through and what's that person experiencing and so forth. That's a good thing to be doing, I do believe. Or if you really want to pray for somebody in need, look at the guy standing up front and pray for him. Pray for me, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing with our waiting time. Simeon watched. He waited. And how long did he wait? It says the poor man waited his whole life. Talk about waiting on God for a long time. This man, I love the picture up here, this little old man holding that baby, his whole life. I don't know about you, but I love pictures of elderly people holding babies. When you see the time difference there of the new life and the person who has lived such 70 score years or 80 years, whatever he was, he lived his whole life, and all he wanted was to see that Messiah. And I wonder what in the world he was thinking when he held that baby in his arms, and the Holy Spirit said, this is it. Like everybody else, he probably expected the Messiah would already be a grown man. He probably expected the Messiah would be a great king, or a great warrior, a great battler. But there he is holding that precious little baby in his arms. And the Holy Spirit confirms to Simeon, this is it. Who you hold is who you've been waiting for. And then we see finally here that Simeon waited with power. He is waiting with power. In the same way, church, when we say we need more patience, guess what? We're not helpless. We're not hopeless. God will give you the power you need to wait sometimes. He'll give us the power we need. As Simeon says, waited on the power of the Holy Spirit, verse 25. The Holy Spirit was upon him. Verse 26, it says it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Verse 27 says he was moved by the Spirit. He went to the temple, and Simeon has the Holy Spirit with him, guiding him through life. Galatians 4, 4 says, In the fullness of time, God sent his Son, born of a woman. Simeon was waiting for a lifetime, but what more precious thing could he be waiting for? And when he was waiting there, he was waiting with purpose. He was waiting with patience. And he was waiting with the power of the Holy Spirit. What are you waiting on here today? Are you waiting on test results? Are you waiting for your marriage to get fixed? Are you waiting for a problem to be solved at work or at school? Are you waiting to get through a surgery or a procedure that's coming up? What are you waiting on? Here's the beautiful thing about waiting as a Christian. We never wait alone. He will always be with you. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're waiting on. You say, I've been praying and praying, preacher, for this answer to prayer, and I'm not getting it the way I'd hoped for. Keep waiting, and guess what? As you wait, you will not wait alone, but he will be with you. For Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Praise the Lord. So for those of you in the waiting room of life this week, remember old Simeon. He waited his whole life, and he was rewarded by holding that baby. In the same way, keep your faith, trust in God, wait on God, believe in God. He will be right there with you the whole time, never leaving you, and he'll help you through that waiting room. And praise be to God. I love the one time I went to the doctor, 
and I went in for a medical procedure and I sat there and I was sitting there waiting to go into that operating room and that doctor, he knew I was a preacher and he said, you know, God's already in there before we even go in that room. Isn't that wonderful to know that God is with you all the time? He's with you all the time. Wait on the Lord and you will renew your strength. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the waiting time of life. Help us to look at the waiting time not as a bad time, but as a rewarding time. When we have to sit at that stoplight a little extra longer, we have to go to that waiting room just a little longer. It's all about our state of mind. It's all about whether we want to look at it negatively or positively. Help us, Lord, to see the waiting times of life as good times, not bad times, as times where we can draw closer to you in prayer and study of your word, as times where we can maybe pray for somebody else or reach out and help somebody else that we know is going through a struggle in life. But we have to wait a lot in this world, Lord, but I believe it's intentional. I believe you intentionally send waiting room times to our lives so we will slow down, be still, and be in your presence. Help us to learn that lesson, I pray today, and help us practice it going forward. We ask in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. There's someone here this morning, you're in a waiting room pattern, you're waiting for God to respond or to heal you or to get you through a situation and you need someone to pray with you, I would love to pray with you this morning as we stand and sing, The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. You know, let's stand and sing that song together. If you want to come down here and pray about something, I'd love to pray with you as we stand and sing. of that song are so very true. Yeah. Amen. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. I agree completely. Well, it's been a good day, and I pray you have a wonderful week this week, and stay healthy and stay safe. And remember when you're in those waiting rooms, 
practice it. It can be a bad thing or it can be a blessing. I choose to try to make it a blessing as we sit there and wait. Anything else we need to say before we go? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mike and I said we both had the same problem, the watery eyes. <laughs> he said snot. I wasn't going to say the snot. <laughs> All right. I hope you all have a great day. Have a wonderful week. Join me tonight online at 630 as we worship tonight online. And then Wednesday night, come out and join us and online. Brother Deb, would you dismiss us in prayer?